This screencast covers the material in Module 5, Lesson 4, where we use multiplication to find the volume of rectangular prisms. All right, let's start. Uh, the first part here is we're giving representations, and each one of these cubes represents one cubic centimeter. So that means that the length, the width, and the height of this each cube is one centimeter. So we need to find the length, the width, the height, and finally the volume. So let's start. We find the length. That's usually the longest of the dimensions here. We have four centimeters long. We will record four. Now we'll uh, record the width and we go from front to back and we have two centimeters. Now we're going to look at the height and the height is four centimeters. Well we can look at uh, this as we have in the past. We know that we have four by four that's 16 in the front. We have 16 in the back. 16 plus 16 is 32. We could also look at that any other number of ways. We could look at uh, the bottom layer. We know that we have 4 by 2. We have 8. And each one of these layers is 8. So if I have 8 times 4, I also get 32. Now let's look at the next one. Again, we'll look at the length. That's 4. We'll look at the width. We can count 3 cubes. And if we look at the height, we can now count three more cubes. Now let's uh, look at the volume. We could say that I have one or four by three, that's 12. I have three layers of 12, so we're going to say 36. We could also look at the bottom. I have one, two, three, four by three, that's 12. And we can, again, have three layers of 12. We could also do it this way. We can look at this uh, face here and see that there's nine, and we have four layers of nine. Either way we cut it, we have 36. In the next part, they tell us to write a multiplication sentence. That you could use to calculate the volume for each rectangular prism in problem one. Well, let's do C. So I have four centimeters times two centimeters times four centimeters and I can simplify I know that two or four times two is eight and I multiply eight times four and I get 32 and that's 32 centimeters cubed as we see right here why is it cubed well I'm not just multiplying the numbers I'm multiplying centimeters times centimeters times centimeters and if I multiply that, and I can use the exponent, centimeters cubed or centimeters to the third, because, again, part of the calculation is not just the numbers, it's also the units of measure. Let's do D. I have my length, 4 centimeters. I have my width, times 3 centimeters. And my height, again, 3 centimeters. I can multiply these together. I get 12 times 3, and that makes 36. And what I'll do here is record 36. And again, since I'm multiplying centimeters times centimeters times centimeters, I have centimeters cubed. The next one is less uh, concrete, a little more abstract. We're simply given the measurements, but that doesn't change much. They actually, It's actually easier because they do the counting for us. So what do I have here? Let's look at A. I have a length of 4 inches. And I have a width of 3 inches. And I have a height of 4 inches. And I can simply multiply those. So 4 times 3 is 12 times 4 equals 48. And again, since I'm multiplying inches times inches times inches, it's inches cubed. And let's record that on our line. 48 inches cubed. 
one more example. We have a, a length of 3 meters times a width of 2 meters times a height of 6 meters. 3 times 2 is 6 times 6 equals 36. And of course, once again, we have meter times meter times meter, so it's 36 meters cubed. We'll record that. 36 meters cubed. Now we'll go on to uh, using area to find our volume. Okay, in this case, we have the area. And it's the area of a face. So this face here has an area of 60 centimeters. Now we can use that. Now wh what do we likely have here? Well, we know that area is found by measure uh, multiplying length times width. So even though we don't know that for sure, and it really doesn't matter, this is maybe 6, this may be 10, and all we have to do is multiply 6 times 10 times 5. But part of the multiplication is already done for us. We already have the length and the width, or the length and the height in this case, actually, uh, determined for us. We know that it might be 5 by 12, it might be 6 by 10. We're not sure. It doesn't matter. Because any way we multiply it, it's going to come out the same. So if I have the area of 60, okay, I'm going to look at this dimension. It's 60 times 5. And 60 times 5 is 300. But let's now look at the units because we excluded that. So I have 60 centimeters squared times 5 centimeters. Well, I have centimeters squared times centimeters. That's the same as centimeters times centimeters times centimeters. And that would equal 300 centimeters cubed. Let's look at the next one. Again, we have two dimensions here uh, that are accounted for in this number. Okay, again, I don't know exactly what it is, but it's likely 5 by 4. And if I multiplied 5 times 4, uh, this one's interesting because this is labeled here. The label should go here. 12 centimeters. So there's a little error in here. So that would be 5 by 4 by 12. And again, that would be 20 times 12 equals 240. Again, if we look at our units here, I have 20 inches squared times 12 inches. That would make it 240 inches cubed. So again we have a little error here. This area here is 20. Uh, there's uh, clearly a mistake here. This We'd have to be looking at this dimension to find the area of this prism. And we have sufficient information because again, once again, area is length times width. Area could also be height times width or uh, width times height, any combination of two dimensions of our rectangular prism. Okay, this one's pretty simple, and again, we were talking about the face. The face was one of those surfaces we had here. So we had a face where the area is uh, 56. Let's just do a little drawing here to just kind of show what's going on here. Okay, now we know that the height is 4 meters, and uh, we can uh, determine that this is probably 8 is the length and 7th is the width. It doesn't matter because uh, any, any pair of factors that are multiplied to make 56 would make this work. And of course, the only two factors that we have that would work in this situation is 8 and 7. So... Let's do this two ways. I can have 8 times 7 times 4. And again, those units are meters. I can simplify that. 56 times 4. And that equals 200. 
24. And again, since it's meters times meters times meters, that would be meters cubed. And as we can see, if we simply multiply our 56 times 4, which we have in our second step here, we end up with that answer. I'm going to leave the next one to you. Uh, we solved one for you. The next one should be simple enough to do. We simply need to multiply the area times the height. Don't forget our units. We have square units here, which are inches squared times inches, which would equal inches cubed.